Hello there, this is Josh with Core Reserve, and this video is going to be an overview on getting started with setting up your organization. This video is going to go along with the getting started collection of articles that we have in our knowledge base. So if you would like to take a look at those articles, you can hit the book icon right here to get over to the knowledge base. And from here, you can click on getting started to take a look at all of the articles that are in this collection. You can also reach out to our customer success team if you have any additional questions by clicking this green icon in the top right corner. To get started, I will mention a few things that are optional. The first one is going to be something that we have called the setup guide. If I go over to a trial account, there's going to be a setup guide right here. If I am already subscribed, I can go over to settings on the sidebar and find the setup guide under the organization settings row. But this is going to be a guide that goes over setting up each aspect of your organization in Core Reserve. With each section, there are going to be multiple tasks that you can set up from this page and also check off once you have completed them. So this is a good place to just sort of keep track of that as you are setting up your account. The next thing I will bring up is the member list import. If you already have a member list and you are switching over to Court Reserve and you want to bring all of those members into your organization, we do have an import process that we can help you with. I recommend reaching out to our customer success team to get some more information on that. We also have an article and a YouTube video that goes over the import process as well. So feel free to go to the knowledge base if you have any additional questions or just want to learn more on that process. The last thing that I will mention here is we do have a front desk training video on our YouTube channel, and we do have an article that links to that YouTube video. This is going to be a great video for training any of your staff. It is aimed specifically towards people that would be at the front desk, but this does go over a lot of the day-to-day -day functions in Core Reserve and can be helpful even if these staff members are not at the front desk. All right, so getting started with setting up your organization, we are really going to be focusing under the settings page, the organization settings row. If we start off over on the general page, the first settings here are going to be organization name, location, phone number, and address. So these pieces of information show on your member portal. So I definitely recommend filling out this information, but we will also be able to pick the date in the currency format. So if you are outside of the US and you have a different currency than the US dollar, or if your month, day, year formatting differs in your country, this is going to be where we can select those different date formats and those different currencies. This is also where you will be able to select your time zone. And then we can also decide the reservation minimum interval. This is going to be the interval that the time slots are broken down into on your expanded and consolidated scheduler. So if you as a facility only book hour interval reservations, you can set this to 60 minutes so that way a member can't book on the 30 minute mark of the hour. Instead, all of the time slots will start on the hour. We have a lot of different settings on this page, but I will try to just highlight the ones that I feel are most important here. So once we start looking at the list of checkboxes, the first two that we have here are do not allow conflicting events or reservations to be created on the organization schedulers and do not allow conflicting events, lessons, or reservations to be added to instructor schedulers. Members will never be able to book a conflicting reservation or lesson, but from the admin side, this is where we get to decide if admins will be able to add conflicting reservations, lessons, or events. So if we check these and we do not allow them to happen. Once an admin tries to hit save, they will get an error. But if we uncheck this, this will allow those conflicting bookings to be booked in the system. The next setting I will point out is hide check-in on scheduler. 
If you are using the check-in feature that we have in Court Reserve, we can keep this unchecked. But if you will not be using the check-in feature where we mark members as checked in for bookings and events, then we can keep this unchecked. If we scroll down a little bit, we will be able to choose if event or reservation reminders will be sent to members. And then from there, we will be able to decide how many hours prior to that event or reservation the member will receive that reminder. So if this is a notification that you would like members to receive, we can check both of these off here and we can decide how far prior to the reservations or the events these reminders will be sent out. Just below that, we can choose an alternate name for resources. So by default, we have this as ball machine in the system. But if you have other resources that are bookable with reservations and not just ball machines, we can always change this to something like resource. The system will automatically find any areas where this word will need to be plural or singular. So when we type it in here, we will want it to just be singular. And near the bottom of this page, the last setting that I will point out here is the allow ability to split a fee equally across players on a reservation. This will depend on how you would like to break down the fees for your members when it comes to reservations. If we check off this setting, this will allow system users when setting up reservation types to have the fee responsibility set to split fee equally across all players. So that way each member on the reservation gets a fee generated when that reservation is booked. All right, so that goes over the standout settings under the general organization settings page. I definitely recommend taking a look at all of the different settings on this page and seeing if any of them will be helpful for your specific setup. If we go back to the organization settings row, the next page that I will go over is the hours of operation. This is going to be where we decide the hours of operation for each day of the week at your facility. And we can also quickly update the core schedules from here as well. If you are a facility that is open 24 seven, we do have an end date option of 11.59 PM. And when that is saved, that will open the full 24 hours of the day on schedulers for this specific date. If not, this is just going to be where we decide those open and closed times each day of the week. All right, so some of the other settings that are under the organization settings row will be under different collections in our knowledge base. So I will be creating videos going over those topics in more details once we get further along the setup process for your organization. The last two things that I will point out when it comes to getting started with setting up your organization are going to be the sign up form for your members and also the welcome email that gets sent out to your members. To set up your sign up form, we will want to scroll down to the portal settings row, and here we are going to have that sign up form page. When we click on this page, we will see on the top that the required fields we already have in here are first name, last name, and email address. And then below that, we are going to have some optional fields that we can include. And if we include it, we will also be able to require these fields. So this is ultimately going to just depend on the information that you would like to receive from members when they are creating their account. And this can differ organization to organization. So I would just make sure to look through each of these options here, see if it needs to be included or required. We also have the ability to add custom fields to the signup form. So if there is any additional information that we do not already have under the optional fields that you need to receive from members, we can go in and we can create a new custom field. We can choose the field type. So if we need the member to type something out, we can do a text box custom field. If we do a text area, that will be a larger text box. And if we do drop down, this will give us multiple options that we can choose. And then the member will pick from these options here. And then the label will be the label for the custom field. So that would be where you can add the question that you are asking the members. 
From there, if it's not already on your form, it will be under the All Custom Fields section, and we will be able to click the Add to Form button to bring that over to the sign up form. From there, if you need to add a disclosure to your sign up form, this is also where you can do that. I will point out that the disclosure is more of just a place to add information that you would like the member to acknowledge before they create their account. The disclosure is not legally binding, and there is also no reporting that tracks when members or if members acknowledge this disclosure. So if you want to learn more on that, I definitely recommend going to our knowledge base and taking a look at our waivers and membership agreements add-on. Once we hit save, all of the changes you've made to this page will then be added to the member portal and any members creating an account will need to fill in all the information that you have added. If we go back to settings on the sidebar, the last thing I will go over in this video is going to be the welcome email. The welcome email page will also be under the portal settings row. So let me go back down there. And the welcome email is going to be the email that you manually send out to members after you have had their accounts imported into your organization. So this is going to be where you can add some maybe additional information on booking policies or different memberships that you offer at your organization. You could even add the link to the Court Reserve mobile app here if you would like for members to download the mobile app. But this is going to be that email that you will be sending out to the members manually after you have their accounts imported into your account. And if you aren't doing an import, this is also the email that is sent out to members after they finish going through the sign up form on your member portal. All right, and that is an overview going over some essential settings when it comes to setting up your organization. If you would like to take a look at the articles going over the topics in this video, you can click the book icon and go to our knowledge base. And if you have any additional questions and would like to reach out to our customer success team, you can click the green button in the top right corner.